It's been over 100 years, specifically 106 years when I'm making this video, since the original Einstein's predictions for the existence, potential existence, of what we now call gravitational waves. The waves in the space-time itself as various objects that have mass, orbit, interact, collide, and produce all sorts of effects, which result in wave-like disturbances in the space-time itself that Einstein did not believe we will ever be able to discover. 100 years later, we've proved them wrong by discovering them using huge detectors several kilometers in size, such as LIGO that you see right here. With the principle of detection actually being pretty simple. By shining two lasers across several kilometers, we can detect minute changes in space-time when the lasers become slightly out of sync, if the foundation of the fabric itself changes by even a few nanometers, moving the lasers out of phase. And so by actively measuring the lasers, and by actively measuring this in two different locations on the planet, it becomes possible to know exactly when a very large gravitational wave passes through planet Earth. And over 80 of them have already been discovered since the original discovery in 2015, which eventually led to the Nobel Prize in 2017. But it turns out that one of these detections from 2020 that was discovered by both LIGO and Virgo detectors was way stranger and way more unusual than anyone ever believed. It was still a collision between two black holes and still possessed very similar properties to everything else we see, with one of the black holes being kind of massive, approximately 40 solar masses, which makes it one of the larger black holes we've discovered so far, but definitely not the largest and not the most massive. But more intriguingly, it was also one of the fastest spinning, possibly even the fastest spinning discovered to date. It was actually spinning almost at its maximum limit. And because this was a spinning black hole, it started to produce some really strange additional effects. Actually, also effects predicted by Einstein back in the days, but the magnitude of these effects was absolutely mind-blowing. In a nutshell, it resulted in what we usually refer to as precession. It's basically a kind of a twisting of the orbit that I guess is easiest to imagine if you look at the typical top. This sort of a top. Notice how the top, as it spins, starts to wobble just a little bit. This is very often known as precession. You might already know that one of the first tests confirming Einstein's theories was the test of the precession of Mercury that happens because of its close proximity to the Sun, which actually changes the orbit of Mercury just a little bit. Without Einstein's theories, it's impossible to explain why Mercury does so. This was actually one of the biggest mysteries in astronomy. Einstein's theories explain it perfectly, with the precession in this case predicting exact position of Mercury and its precession for millions and millions of years. Although in this particular image, this is a bit of an exaggeration. The actual change of the orbit is kind of minuscule and only becomes obvious over periods of hundreds or hundreds of years. More recently though, a lot of precession has been measured from around different neutron stars and various pulsars as they, for example, orbit around another object that causes them to sort of wobble back and forth. In this case, the wobble is also kind of minuscule, but definitely much bigger than Mercury. As a matter of fact, it's usually visible in just a few weeks or just a few months. In other words, this particular effect is not really that easily detectable unless you measure it extremely precisely for a very long time. One of the most extreme examples known to us from previous detections was from the iconic binary pulsars, where a single orbit takes approximately 75 years to precess. This is the whole stellar binary as it's also known. And so a single wobble here would be approximately 75 years, and all of this is caused by the Einsteinian theories. But in the black hole binary that collided with the waves detected in 2020, things were much more extreme. Roughly around 10 billion times more extreme. According to the scientists behind the study and the simulations they've conducted, this was essentially the most extreme physical event we've ever detected, in terms of precession. The entire orbit of these two black holes was wobbling back and forth, precessing several times every single second, which in theory would even be faster than the top I showed you. As a matter of fact, right before the collision, the precession was extremely high. You can kind of see it happening right around here. But this precession is slightly different from the one I showed you with a single object. This is more often known as the lens thuring precession, and you can find a few more links in the description that explain this a little bit more. But in a nutshell, the entire orbit of these two objects starts to wobble back and forth, producing extremely bizarre effects that I guess are kind of difficult for us to imagine unless we look at it in a simulation. So it was basically doing something like this, wobbling back and forth, moving faster and faster, and moving the entire space-time with it. In this case, several times per second. And this is of course a super bizarre event we've never seen before. 
The event that was believed to be completely theoretical and was also believed to be kind of rare up until recently. Moreover, at the end of the collision, there was also a clear sign of a relatively large kick where essentially the final black hole started to move somewhere pretty fast. And that's kind of expected though, this is not unusual, although in this case this kick was measured, but the scientists discovered that the merger between these two black holes was definitely lopsided or one-sided, with the resulting speed being 3 million miles or 4.8 million kilometers per hour. And although theoretically this kind of makes sense and all of this has been predicted, what is actually kind of hard to explain is these types of events are supposedly only happen very rarely. But in this case, we seem to have discovered one after just 80 observations, with extremely high precession, with very high kick, and all of this being lopsided as well. Not to mention the fact that the black hole was also kind of massive. This was supposed to be a 1 in a thousand, if not 1 in a million event, not 1 in 80. And more importantly, are we going to be discovering more of these once LIGO and other detectors become fully functional again? I believe some of this research has been actually put on hold because of the COVID situation, but it's slowly getting back on track. And so, even though the actual detections have been kind of interesting so far, there are still so many mysteries we cannot answer. We've discussed some of them before, but in a nutshell, a lot of these black holes are way way more massive than anyone ever expected them to be, and many of them seem to actually create objects that are even more massive. Originally, the scientists predicted something that was maybe 5 to 10 solar masses, most of the black holes we've discovered so far seem to be at least 30 to 50 solar masses, something that doesn't add up. Although there was a super interesting explanation that someone proposed a while ago that you can find in the description below. But the fact that once again we were able to see these extreme effects from the Einsteinian theories, and in this case the most extreme precession we've ever seen, with the orbital wobble of several times per second, that by itself already makes it a kind of a historical event. An event that currently is kind of difficult to explain, but will probably result in some really intriguing discoveries in the next few years. And by the way, the link in the description allows you to visualize this and also even hear the event as it happened in real time, although in this case, this was a conversion of space-time waves into the auditory waves that we can perceive. Here's one of them that you can hear right now. And this is of course after only 7 years of research. You can only imagine what we're going to be talking about in 7 years from now. Things will probably get a lot more extreme. Which means that you should probably subscribe if you enjoy these videos. We'll be talking about many more of these in future videos as well. Thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining general membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that does have a black on it as well. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.